What is up everyone, JD here. Hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm really excited to bring you my review of the Devo Nice Stout. What I'm gonna be doing today is just kind of going through specs, size comparisons, thoughts and impressions, and alternate recommendations. Without any delay, let's go ahead and jump into today's big hand review. The Devo Stout has a 3.3 inch 20 CV blade steel, 4.34 inch titanium handles with either micarta or carbon fiber overlays, overall length 7.67 inches, and claimed weight 3.8 ounces. Let's go ahead and check the weight on this one out. Coming in at 3.9, so a little bit heavier. Could be some variances between the carbon fiber and the micarta. Not really sure about that. Next up, we're going to go ahead and do some size comparisons. I'll bring some knives out here for size reference for you. So you get a good idea just how big or small the knife is. And then we'll do profile so you can see how it'll also feel in hand and how it'll feel when you're carrying this in pocket. I'm going to go ahead and bring out the size comparison knives first up. The Demco AD 20.5, very recognizable knife. I think all of you are familiar with that one. And we'll go ahead and bring out the Spyderco Shaman. So as you can see, this one here is kind of in between the two. A little bit bigger than the AD 20.5 and I would say a fair bit smaller than the Shaman. So it puts you right in between the two of those knives. Let's go ahead and move these two out of the way. And we'll go ahead and bring out the other two comparison knives. First up, we will bring out the Benchmade Bug Out. This is a very recognizable knife and very comparable as far as the presence of the knife. Next, we'll go ahead and bring out the SIG K320 made by Hogue. This one here is definitely going to be bigger overall. So you can see more close in size to the Bug Out but maybe just a little bit more presence, at least around the blade, but I feel like that handle is very similar to the bug out and how it's gonna feel in hand. Let me go ahead and get these two out of the way and we'll bring out the budget knives. First, we're gonna bring out the Kubi KU321, also known as the Kubi Royal. This is a budget and my sub three inch knife for comparison in size. And we'll bring out the Buck 110, also a budget USA alternative if you need a beater for under 30 bucks. So you can see here, definitely bigger than the Royal, but smaller than the Buck. We'll go ahead and do a quick profile comparison so you can get an idea just how thick or thin the knife is. All right. First up, we're going to put it up against the Royal. Very similar in size, just a little bit thinner than the Royal. We'll go ahead and bring out the AD 20.5 out here. You can see the AD 20.5 is much thinner overall. And we'll bring out the Bug Out as the final size comparison. Also very thin. So we've run off through the size comparisons. Hopefully that has helped you with the size of this knife. What I'd like to do next is go ahead and talk about the unboxing experience before I jump into the knife. So as you saw in the beginning, you do get a lot with this knife. You get the pouch, which is like this, it looks like it's a faux leather, I doubt it's real leather. And it's well padded on the inside, it has a spot for your knife, so you can put your papers, stickers, whatever you want in there. Um, no surprise there, it's a little bit of pressure <laughs> to review a very popular YouTuber's knife. But I am going to do what I always do and just be very, very detailed and very precise. You get a lot of hardware, which I really appreciate, because if you can do it yourself, it's nice. But if you're not a do-it-yourselfer and you like to send your stuff in, then it becomes a little bit of a challenge. You're either going to need to learn or you're going to have to figure out something between Devo Knives and yourself, because I don't know what the warranty is with QSP. Again, because they are sourcing their knives to be manufactured there. So hopefully there's some sort of warranty for you or um, something that they can do for you if you ever need something done. You get uh, a lot of swag. You get some stickers. You get a coaster. You get a pretty nice uh, Terry microfiber cloth here that you can use to wipe your knives down. White's a great color. <laughs> it's going to show everything. <laughs> At least you know that it's clean. And you get a really nice issuing stitches um, cloth. I have not encountered their cloths yet. It's very nice. It's got this microfiber cloth on this side. And then um, 
I'm not quite sure what this material is on here, but it definitely, you know, is very well done. The print seems really nice. So pretty good quality product and nice to get some exposure there and good for Devo knives for representing some of these small businesses here and some of this stuff. So that's pretty cool. The other thing that you get in there is you get a keychain bottle opener. So when you're done using your stout to break your boxes down, you can crack open a cold beer. So very nice. It is um, pretty cool to get all that type of stuff. I really have always said I don't mind getting like the Spyderco experience for lack of a better description where you're just getting the box and the knife so long as all of the money goes into the product itself. I really don't have much to complain about. Having said that, it was pretty cool um, from that experience standpoint. But let's go ahead and jump into the knife because I'm sure that is what all of you are here for. I'm going to start with the Ergos having a larger hand. I appreciate the fact that it's a chunky knife and that it has very neutral ergonomics really comfortable in hand i do feel the pocket clip a little bit the wire pocket clip is there but it's not a hot spot so i just recognize that it's there because i can feel it in the hand it lands pretty much where most pocket clips do right in the meat of the hand really no issues when i was using it to cut some cardboard which we'll circle back to here in a moment it is reversible i did see the video where he talked about it was important that this was compatible with the aftermarket clips that are available for example lynch northwest has one that goes on say like the spiderco wire pocket clips where that would fit and be compatible so that you have aftermarket options with this knife which i think is really nice because if you're not into the wire pocket clip you can get that type of clip what I will say is an advantage of the wire pocket clip is that it's very incognito, meaning when it actually goes in pocket, and here, we'll use the uh, issuing stitches to demonstrate this. When it goes in pocket, it's less material to be noticed that's hanging outside of the pocket. It's a wire pocket clip, very thin, um, less noticeable, I would say. But if you don't like it, because one of the disadvantages is it tends to be easily moved around because there's less material to support and strengthen it. So you can go out and get a Lynch Northwest. And the nice thing about Lynch Northwest in this example is you can get it plain, anodize it yourself. You can get all of the different colorways that he does with the anodizing. Um, and Casey's a great guy and a great small business to support. Very stand up, really like him and his company and what he does. It is reversible. You get a nice titanium back spacer. At least I think it is titanium. Let me check here. Yep, titanium. And it feels like the liners are titanium too. Yep, steel lock bar insert, which makes sense. It's a you know bolstered frame lock. I think it looks really good. The transitions between the micarta and the titanium is very well done. QSP did a very nice job. You're not really feeling anything until you get to right here. So it is a little sharp right here, not awful. Just meaning like you can feel it, especially when it is in the open position. So when your hand's there, you can just, you know, you feel a little bit of bite, but it's not awful. The other thing that I'll say is that this right here is very sharp. So I do feel that it's very scratchy in my hands. So when I, when I notice it is when I go to get in position. So when I'm going to get in position and my finger goes across it, I do feel it scratching the uh, inside of my finger. It's not leaving any white marks or anything like that, but I do feel that there. So I wish that QSP or Devo Nas maybe would have caught that. I don't know if they asked for that to be knocked down just a little bit so it's not so sharp. This side though, the lock bar side is knocked down. It's not sharp at all. The one thing that I did notice was a little strange. I remember seeing we had the prototype and folks were saying the gap there was bigger. It looks like it's reduced more or maybe they left more material. But what I thought was odd is it's not even. So I would have thought QSP, especially being the manufacturer, would have caught that and just, you know, sanded that down a little bit so that it was, you know, it, it was flush. Now over here, it looks like it ramps up and comes down. So I don't know if they were trying to match it exactly, but you know, this has the flat spot. This does not. And again, it just stands up a little bit. I really notice it when it's in the locked position. I think in the open position, it's a little harder to notice. But just something that I noticed there doesn't affect anything in reality. Just one of the things that I noticed, and again, because of the price point of this knife, you know me on my channel, when you start to get up over 
250 over 300 i look for the little tiny things to nitpick about but again it does not affect how the feel the knife feels in hand does not affect the performance of the knife or anything to that degree now let's talk about the action this one is on ceramic bearings and it is tuned exceptionally well this thing is like 80 percent knife and 40% fidget toy. No, 20% <laughs> fidget toy. Um, yes, I know the math didn't add up at first. That was sarcasm for you guys out there that were taking it serious. It is very, very, very smooth. And I have a feeling, I have fidgeted with this one a lot. I have a feeling as it continues to break in, it's probably going to turn guillotine. But I'm very happy with the ability to control it at where it's at at this current point. I love the full ford finger choil i love that it's dedicated it gets you right up next to the cutting path it has a very generous sharpening choil um, they did a good job with the plunge drop here and it is not close at all and you have a lot of material to get to that plunge grind so you would have to sharpen the hell out of this knife before you would run out of that i appreciate that now from a large hand perspective the spoon is in a good place for the detail work it gets you where you need to be for it um, for me it's a little further back but again that's a large hand issue i can actually reach out further to that tip so for me it's a little far behind but it's not awful because even if i wanted to use it you know i can do that if i wanted to get into some apples and shave some apple wedges off or anything like that i could do that i really love the utility shape of this i'm glad they went with that it's nice and low you don't have to get up high for any of your draw cuts any utility cuts that you're having to do with the knife those are really nice it has a very decently balanced knife blade um geometry is what i'm trying to say it is not terribly thick and um, it has an okay hollow grind. It's definitely not the best that I've ever seen, but it's not bad either. It's nice because it gets it thin behind the edge and it feels like it moves through the materials pretty well. I'm very happy about that. Now, I wanna talk about the sharpened edge from QSP. Came razor sharp out of the box. I tested it on paper and the edge had no imperfections whatsoever. So I decided here to go ahead and record a little bit of footage of me just kind of going through some cardboard just to see what it feels like going through the cardboard because normally I'm not cutting this much cardboard. I definitely do not break down the boxes in this thin of strips. I cut them in sections small enough and flat enough to get them in my recycling bin and not take up a ton of space. And that's it. I, I do this when I get a knife just because I want to see how it transitions going from paper to cardboard back to paper. How's the edge going to feel? Well, after I cut, you know, quite a few pieces, I didn't catch the first part of cutting this box open on camera. I was like distracted and forgot to record. And then I realized I wasn't recording. So I picked up late. So I'm sorry. But I was working on this piece and just cutting a bunch of little strips just because I wanted to see how it tr transitioned back. I didn't notice anything in the cardboard that i made a hit may have hit but this is again very cheap cardboard even though it's thinner so i may have hit something that disrupted the edge a little bit because i noticed when i went to go back to the paper it was getting hung up a little bit close to the finger choil so i tried a couple of slices just to make sure it wasn't the paper folding or anything like that it is definitely not a very controlled environment um, so I fully acknowledge that, but I did go ahead, strop it up a little bit. I did six on each side, and then I did one on each side up to five. So I did um, six, six, and then I did one, one, two, two, three, three. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and I did light, light pressure strops on a green compound and then just took it against the paper again just to make sure that I didn't have a burr making the cut i ran it through the paper and it was fine so i don't know what i did to maybe hit that but it was definitely in one spot and i don't know if i did that or not because when i pulled it out of the box and ran it through the paper it wasn't doing that so i have to assume it was when i was cutting through the cardboard and who the hell knows what's in that cardboard and what i could have hit because you can hit anything on an edge when it's that sharp and it could cause a tiny imperfection that is gonna hang up on paper. And that's what the paper cuts for, right? It is just to see if there's imperfections in the edge. It's not really telling you anything other than, is it slicing through the paper or is it tearing through the paper? So that's, that's the whole purpose of that. 
Another thing that I noticed from the prototypes is the fact that they actually put the logo on there and I kind of like that. I don't know how well it comes through on the camera, but it has like a little reflectivity and I kind of like that. I think it looks really, really good. I love the stone wash finish. I prefer that over the black wash. Um, I just like that because you see how clean it looks after going through that cardboard and I even went through their tape in that cardboard just wipes right off i love that fact that it keeps it clean and it, it's a good looking stone wash and qsp does a really good job on that it does not have any relief cut on the inside and that's because it has very thin liners because the micarta overlay is bolstering that i think i would like to see them if this is going to be their flagship model um, like the nimble is for for emp dc i think that's how you say it i think it would be cool if they wanted to make this their flagship model and if they wanted to do a drop point variant, if they wanted to do a Tonto and a reverse Tonto blade variant on this and maybe do like a full titanium handle, maybe even do some milling a la the Dawn or the Honeycomb, which looks really good on the Tonto. I don't know why they did it just on the Nimble Tonto. I wish they would have done it on the X. I hope that they do it on the X. I think it, the Honeycomb to me is just a great looking, aesthetically designed uh, machining that they've done on it. But overall, it's a solid knife. I think they made a good choice going with QSP because they're a reputable manufacturer. I think they did a really good job on this knife. Um, the only, again, the only complaints, I, I don't prefer the wire pocket clip, but they purposely made it so that Lynch would go on there. And that's probably the route I'm going to go. I'll probably grab a Lynch and then just a little bit of sharpness here and the height. I think I would report that back to QSP as something to correct if they do any future iterations. Great access to the lock bar, no lock stick whatsoever. Again, QSP did a really good job on this. I think the only thing I would like to see happen, I'd like to see a couple of these go over to transparent knives to get poked. I'd like to see if the requested heat treat and the advertised heat treat are lining up. He went into great detail explaining why QSP would only go up to 61, I think it was. I'm going off memory. I'm sorry if that's wrong. But I think that after that, they're not willing to warranty the work or guarantee the work. I'm not quite sure which is which. So 61 is the highest. But again, 20 CV at 61 is still really, really good. It is, I, I think people would tell you that it's acceptable, but it's going to perform really well. It's going to continue to hold that edge. And it's still going to be really easy to sharpen at that level. So I'm okay with that. That doesn't bother me at all. I know Kevin... Um, He's probably more of a perfectionist. He's, he wishes, I am assuming, that he wanted it at 62, 63, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I think this is a good heat treat, and I think this is going to be a solid performer. And uh, overall, I like the knife. Alternative recommendations, if you don't have $250 to $300, which is what I've seen them going for uh, on the aftermarket on Reddit when I've checked on there just to see what people are selling them for because I fully anticipated that. There's not a whole lot out there that has this exact build, but I'll go ahead and throw a couple recommendations out. Um, the first one is actually going to be very close in price point, <laughs> 250. That has a very similar style to it. That's going to be the Wii Roxy 3. The other is going to be the, uh, what is this one? Oops, my finger slipped totally while I was thinking, and I'm not very good at doing that reverse flick left-handed because it sits on the lock bar. This is the Tucson TS270. So very similar attitudes or approaches, I guess. But this one's 110 with a 14C28N, and you get a full titanium frame lock versus it being the titanium with the overlay bol bolster. So if you want something a little bit bigger, the Tucson's going to get you there. And if you want something, you know, $110 or under, you can sign up for alerts on White Mountain Knives. My discount code would give you 10% off for that. And you're going to get this worn cliff blade shape. That's a great utility shape. And you're going to get a larger knife that's going to give you slightly better ergos. Um, just a couple, like I said, alternative recommendations. The other one that you could do if you wanted a U.S. make, you can pick up the Yojimbo 2. This is going to be a nice worn cliff. And I like Spyderco. They have great build quality. Um, very reputable. And I respect them a great deal. But if you really don't love 
the way that the Yojimbo looks, then I would recommend going ahead and picking up a Manix 2. It's not quite exactly the same, but it is going to get you that low down tip. That's going to be great for utility cuts, great ergos. Um, but again, a little bit larger. And again, you're going to be spending around $150 to $200 on that as well. Oh, all in all, I'm happy with the knife. It's a great experience. I think it's a very safe design because it has very neutral ergonomics um, and it's going to work really well for you the utility cuts and then for those out there that really love a fidgety knife this is going to work really nicely for righties and lefties because they did give you that bolster for you to rest your thumb on so all in all i think it's good i'd love to see them evolve this one here not necessarily meaning uh change the ergos or the handles i love that neutral i'm saying like let's see a full titanium let's see some milling let's see what else you know you can do out there and um i think that the copper carbon fiber i think is the one versus the aluminum i think the copper looks good on the all blacked out version but i could see someone saying in this colorway the aluminum carbon fiber might look pretty good too I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor and leave a like. Consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. I appreciate all the support from everyone out there who is. And if you do subscribe, thank you for that. I will have links down in the description below. I know Devo Nas has said that they have some extra orders that they're going to be pushing out to vendors. My bet would be that you're going to see some going over to Urban EDC Supply. I bet that you probably even see some going over to... I'm not really sure who else... Kevin really likes to deal with. I know, I guarantee you some are going to go to Urban EDC Supply. Maybe some go to Blade HQ. Maybe some go to Knife Joy. But if you really want to know and you want the most accurate information, give them a follow over on Instagram or sign up for the newsletter on their website if you don't like social media and you'll get all the information that way. Hope all of you have a fantastic week. Until next time, peace.